Iran has developed hypersonic weapon. Top commander. The ballistic missile is reportedly capable of maneuvering inside and outside of the atmosphere. Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah, the southern kingdom, and Jerusalem, the northern kingdom, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, the land, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, in whom the world has ignorantly called Jehovah, or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten son in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American and Seminole Indians, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so, that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed. Now, these are the two most important things you will ever know. The name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his only begotten Son. They're true and proper names. They have many titles, yes, but one true and proper name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son. Now, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahawa. Yah, meaning he. Hawa, meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he, the existing one. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first. And also to the believers consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. They will be calling upon the name Yahawashai. Yah, meaning he, Hawashai, meaning deliverer and savior and that is exactly what he's about to come and do for the second time in physical form with an angelic force as an angelic power having all power in heaven and in earth and we must be saved and rescued from this we're in a time where whole lands could be on fire the earth is burned and few men left as it is written in isaiah that the earth is going to rock to and fro like a drunkard we must be taken off the earth. We must be taken away. We must be changed in order to go out of this atmosphere. We must be off planet in order to survive because the high bank and elites are going to be deep underground and survive that way. But yet they're going to be taken out. But for the hopeful elect, the people of the Lord, the true people of the Lord, we must be rescued, saved, taken. And that's when you are actually saved Unlike what these wacky tacky Christians say, you are not saved from nothing. When you are in that ship, the father ship of the world is only called a UFO and you're with the Lord and your body is changed and your body is fashioned like unto his glorious body. Then you can say you are saved. So without further ado, Lord's willing, this is an edifying lesson. And Lord's willing, I call this lesson. Hmm. A horrible vision from the east. Or I'll call it, it shall come down upon Idumia. Call it that. It shall come down upon Idumia. Okay. This is Joel 3 and 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, the actual heathen. Prepare war. As Yahweh stated, wars, rumors of wars. Be ye not troubled, for these things must come to pass. And with the wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes. But he told his elect to be not troubled, because these things must come to pass everybody else is scared oh man what does that world war three man what are you talking about you got russia and america talking about nuclear war that can destroy uh, uh civilization as we know it but whose civilization esau edom's civilization the self-proclaimed white man and his people that constructed these weapons not of their own minds but through huh, through the beautiful huh, the beautiful uh, uh, intuition and guidance of Yahabash Mashai through the angels to make these weapons for the war of his making. 
And this is Joel three, uh, Joel three and nine. And I'm gonna get Job. It's funny. I thought of Job. Joel three and nine. Proclaim me this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. Things that are for uh, agriculture and things of that nature. These uh, these monetary funds are not going uh, to agriculture and, and the building up of a nation or your goods and services that you can ship to other lands and nations as trade. But they're putting all their money and finances into military, uh, uh, military options and military weaponry. OK, it says, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords. Beat the certain weapon, uh, uh, beat the certain instruments that you will use for agriculture into weaponry and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. And how is the weak saying that they are strong because they're backed by a strong uh, 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 first world nation or or uh, uh, pretty much yeah, a first world nation. All right. Uh, 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 hmm. An advanced nation. OK. A technological and military uh, uh, type nation. All right, that's why uh, uh, the state of Israel is so bold because they were backed by the U.S. But now they're not as bold anymore because Iran is backed by another superpower, which is Russia. And now they have the very thing that had those small hats over there in our land. Very fearful and frightening. And it's very crazy because... You had that blood moon happen on the uh, the same day as the elections, which was an omen that uh, America uh, is heading heading down a destructive path, which is spiritual. And with that same thing, the signs in the heavens, distress was upon nations. Hurricane just hit in Florida. OK. The Lord is constantly uh, hitting this place. Uh, economic woes. People are about to be laid off. OK. Uh, there's about to be a, a railroad uh, strike. All right, because they're not they're not coming to an agreement. What else? Oh, Israel just dropped the dollar. The, the dollar is of, of no use, is of no value pretty much anymore. It's not backed by anything. So people flaunting they, they weak old money. Well, you don't even know. That is nail and void now. A great crashing from the hills. You see? There's a lot going on. Barakatayah Bashimashai. From the signs of the heavens, as we, as you read in Luke, distress upon nations with perplexity. Nations are going to be in turmoil. But with that, they're preparing for what? War. All right. It says, assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord, Yahabashimashai. Let the heathen be wakened and come up. The valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, the Heavenly Father's name in the word Shapat meaning judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe, because eh? the Lord is going to be the one that's going to cast uh, in the sickle into the earth. And their harvest is the end of the world, the end of this age. And that, and that war that the Lord is going to bring upon the nations, how he's going to judge them. And there was the hiding of his power. All right. And, and not only uh, the sickle is the Lord going to cast into the earth. There was the hiding of his power that uh, out of his hands came horns, which is power, beams of light. Those uh, lasers from the chariots, but also the missiles are going to be flying. All right. The weapons of the Lord's indignation to destroy the whole land. All right. You see that? So the Lord is going to do a great work for his people, the elect, and for his name's sake and for the land's sake. This is Joel 3 and 13. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Hashem, is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Why? Because there's smoke from the uh, uh, the missiles 
imploding and hitting the earth. And also from the chair that the Lord is going to be riding on, it's going to cover the sun and the moon. Everything is going to stop at the Lord's presence. And it can also uh, mean your wisdom and understanding shall be uh, darkened because you're not going to know what to do. It says the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake by those missiles, by his presence. But the Lord Yahweh will be the hope of his people, the elect of his people and the strength of the children of Israel because he's going to fight for us. We can't fight for ourselves. The Lord is going to fight for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let's get into this article. Before we do, let me put sickle in real quick. Sickle. Because the Lord is going to cast in that sickle into the earth. It tells you that in the book of Revelation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. Ha, <laughs> well, start from 14. Revelation 14, 14. And I looked and behold the white cloud, which is the, the, the white, the same, the same white horse that was mentioned, but now is a white cloud. <clears throat> the cloud, the Lord making the cloud his chariot. The Lord going to ride on that chariot, the fathership. And upon the cloud, one sat like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and another a sharp sickle. You see that as the weapon, the hiding of his power, that laser. All right. It says, and another came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap. All right. The harvest is the end of the world. The angels are the reapers and they're going to take uh, the elect and put them into barns, which is the chariots. And then they're going to uh, be transferred into one ship. The ship where the Lord Yahweh Shai is. That cloud. Alright. And then the others are going to be bundled <coughs> to be burned. Two thirds. The heathen, the enemies. And that, that burning is going to be the nuclear fire. And those lasers. Hot fire. It says. And I looked and behold the white cloud. And upon the cloud. Oh, Salak, I already read that. But let's read it again. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown. Because the Lord is going to take the dominion of the earth. <clears throat> and in his hand a sharp sickle. And then another angel came out of the temple crying with, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. He that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And that's why the Lord said, He's going to stomp the residue of the people like grapes, trample them in his fury. All right. Verse 19. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of Yahweh. And the wine press was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the wine press, even into the horse's bridle. That's how much killing the Lord is going to bring by the space of a thousand six hundred uh, furlongs. I forgot how many football fields that is of blood, but that's <clears throat> a lot of killing. But bear with me. All right, I'm back, Akim. Let's read this article. It says, Iran has developed hypersonic weapon. Top commander. The ballistic missile is reportedly capable of maneuvering inside and outside the atmosphere. See that? It's all, it's all, uh, it's all prophecy, Akim. Is RT too. Rakata Yahweh Mashai. But this is the book of Isaiah 34 and 5. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Go in and out of the atmosphere and then back in. And then uh, hit its target. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. 
So it's going to come down upon all of Esau, Edom's power structure, who are the Edomites. Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. And who are also Edomites, those Amalekites dwell in our land that the Iranians hate, which are the Persians or the Carmanians. Okay. <whistles> Let's keep reading. It says, Iran has developed a ballistic missile capable of flying at hypersonic speeds. Now, when you go into hypersonic, it's so fast, it's undetected, which that's why the Lord says uh, he's going to come as a thief in the night. It says, Iran has developed a ballistic missile capable of flying at hypersonic speeds, a senior military officer turned journalist on Thursday. The weapon system is designed to destroy enemy anti-missile defenses and can maneuver both inside and outside of the atmosphere, indicating its relatively long range. That's why I told you in Joel, it's funny we were just in Joel, Joel 2, that these missiles shall not break their ranks. You see? It says the news came from Emir Ali, Hajiza Zadeh. All right. It says the commander of the aerospace force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corp, IRGC. He spoke to journalists on the sidelines of a commemorative event dedicated to his predecessor, Hassan Tarani uh, Mogadam, who is credited with launching Iran's long range ballistic missile program. Haji Zadeh stressed that the technology to intercept hypersonic missiles was unlikely to be developed for decades, but offered no further detail about the purported new weapon system. But hey, see how the Lord has greatly increased uh, their weaponry? He's put it in the minds of them to, to, to create these weapons for the war of his making. Since hypersonic weapons come in various designs, but are but are all capable of withstanding extreme conditions of flying through the atmosphere at speeds exceeding five times the speed of sound. Only a handful of nations, such as Russia, which is that the, the Iran is backed by Russia, China, also backed by uh, um, Russia is uh, with China. China is with Iran. Iran is with Russia and China and the U.S., which is an enemy of Iran. But yet there's two key players that are with Iran that are against the U.S. And who is Iran also against? Those ugly-ass Idumians in our land. Amalek. Okay? And the U.S. has the advanced technology necessary. All right, these, these nations such as Russia, China, and the U.S. have the advanced technology necessary to build such weapons. But who backed up the, uh, the Iranians? The Russians. Since Iran invested heavily in developing missile capabilities since its decade-long war with Iraq in the 1980s. Tehran says its arsenal of weapons is a deterrent against possible aggression by the U.S. or its regional allies, including Israel and Saudi Arabia, which Saudi Arabia may join forces with, will join forces with uh, Iran. You know why? Because it says that the dragons of Arabia shall come out. You see, and you got to remember that uh, Iran to Iraq, to Afghanistan, to Saudi Arabia and those surrounding nations, Syria and all those, those nations in the region, save for ugly ass, uh, them rats, Amalek, those small hats. Everybody in that region is connected through what they may be different nation nations. They may be uh, you got Ishmael, which are the Arabs and you got uh, Iran, which are Elamites, the East Indians, the thing that connects them all. In that region is their religion islam okay and they have a common enemy the west preferably the u.s and those ugly ass small hats in the in the region okay it says washington imposed a number of unilateral sanctions on iran some of which are directly linked to its missile tests so uh that's pretty much the end of the article but it goes to show you we're inching closer and closer to that time it says the sword of the Lord, Isaiah 34 and 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Bozrah. Now, Basra is the U.S. The ancient capital city of Edom was Basra, which means, uh, uh, what does it mean? Like a pen? 
you know, uh, let, let's see here. We're going to go into it. Let's get out of this article. Let's go to the blue letter. We're going to go here. Bear with me. Okay, Ezekiel 38. Now we're going to get Bozra. But let me read this here. This is Ezekiel 38 and 4. Now, in the beginning uh, uh, verses, it's going into Russia. Gog and Magog, those lands, if you look at an ancient map, it'll be the lands of Russia today. All right. This is Ezekiel 38 and 4. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth. And all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, military weaponry, advanced weaponry, hence hypersonic missiles. Only uh, uh, first world nations have that as Russia, China, and the U.S. You see, now Iran is, is in that ballpark. Let the weak say, I am strong, as uh, as we read. Okay, let the weak say, I am strong. And this is Ezekiel 38 and 5. Persia, see the first nation mentioned right after Russia was who? Persia, which are the Iranians. Ethiopia, which is the Kushites. And Libya, North Africa, with them, all of them with shields and helmet, ready for war. All right, it says Persia, Ethiopia, Libya will join you too with all their weapons. Gomer, which is uh, the north quarter of Syria, and all his bands, the house of Togoma, and the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. See that? Those are all the nations that are going to be with Russia, gathered against the west, preferably uh, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. All right, now let's go to Isaiah 34. And six, we're going to go to Bozra. Okay. And then up top, I'm going to get in a moment. This is Isaiah 34 and six. The sword of the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shai is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs going into our people, two thirds and goats, Edomites. And with the fat of the kidneys of rams, the other nations. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Bozra. And Bozra, in prophecy, is America. The capital city of the Edomites in this time, which in the ancient world, the ancient capital city of Edom was Bozra. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. And the unicorns going into their satellites, space force, the space stations. All right, communication systems is going to be thrown down. All right. Once you climb up into the heavens, thence will the Lord bring thee down. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord Yahabashimashai's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. <whistles> and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It's going to be uh, destroyed with nuclear fire. Before them, the land was as a garden of Edom, but after them, a desolate wilderness. <whistles> okay, here we go. Job 34 and 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight. Now, in our time, you have a thing called the doomsday clock. And they said when it hits midnight, that means nuclear war or nuclear holocaust. Okay? So it says, in a moment shall they die, the people. And the people shall be troubled at midnight, nuclear war, and pass away. And the mighty shall be taken away without hand. Because the same day the missiles fly to destroy Esau Edom's power structure and come down upon Idumia, the Edomites, is the same day that the Lord, with the hiding of his power, that laser, the weapon, is going to destroy the armies of the world in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. All right. It says, uh, you know, having an innumerable multitude, you know, afterward, you know, nothing was per perceived but dust. 
and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Now was Ezra talking about what he seen the Lord do to the armies of the world. The mighty was taken away without hand. <whistles> you see? Psalm 73 and 19. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. <whistles> Man. That's it. Let's put brimstone in. All right, now that now the Iranians have this this capability, brimstone. Okay, they have this capability. We're gonna get this the word Bozra just to get what it means real quick. I think it's like a pin or something like that. Which America is that pin? The Lord is keeping all you sacrificial animals in in one place, so he can uh, uh, do a great sacrifice in the day he arrives. Now the Hebrew word there is. H1224, the word there is, is Batazara, Batazara, and it says sheepfold or fortress, is the fortress of Edom, or sheepfold, where you have the lambs, goats, and uh, rams, which represents uh, the, the Israelites, the uh, heathen, <coughs> and the Edomites, all right, it says a sheepfold or fortress, all right, that's it. A place in Edom. Yeah. Who is this that coming from Bozra with dye garments? Uh, who is this that coming from Edom with dye garments from Bozra? Representing the killing that the Lord is going to bring on uh, on you, uh, you Edomites. Whew. Psalm 11 and 6. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. Woo! Man, that's it. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, where else did I want to go? We'll go to Joel 2. All right, just going to the missiles. Ain't going to break rank. Here we go. This is what I wanted. This is going into the uh, the missiles coming. This is uh, Job. 18, and I'll start at mm, 12. Job 18 and 12. His strength shall be hunger bitten, and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. <clears throat> Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Going into uh, Yahushua, the firstborn of death is going to devour the strength of this devil. He's going to think his sword, his weaponry is going to do anything. But when he sees true power, they shall know themselves to be but men. Okay? Since his confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors, Yahweh Shemashai. It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his he stole this land. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Those are uh, elements found in nuclear weaponry. But bear with me, Akim. All right, I'm back, Akim. Let's read on. It's Job 18 and uh, I'll read 15 again. And it shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Esau Edom stole every land that he's in, save for the land that was allotted him of Yahweh Shemashai, the land of Edom. Mount Seir, he ain't, he ain't up in there. But well, he's in our land, ugly ass small hats. He's in this land that he stole from our brothers, Gad, Reuben, Issachar, and the other tribes. He's in certain lands uh, uh, of the heathen. He drove them out. And now he is in their lands like Japheth, uh, Europe. That was Japheth's land at the time. Okay. And every other place, this man ain't ain't where he's supposed to be. He's uh, he, he, he keeping not at home. You know, it says this shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Every place where Esau Edom is. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off, his uh, posterity, his seed line. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, his uh, uh, power structure. Ain't nobody going to remember this time. They're going to know that you had a great destruction, and Israel had a great deliverance. Save for, uh, uh, well, the elect had a great deliverance in, in retrospect, all Israel. <laughs> okay? Because most people be like, damn, death would have been better than what that man is going to face, Esau Edom. Because he's going to be destroyed, burned with fire, certain of them, 
Others of them are going to be taken into captivity. Old as shit. And the rest of his nation is going to be reborn into captivity, serve a thousand years, and then be eradicated. So, hey, there you go. This is the uh, this is the lot of him that know it's not uh, Yahweh Mashai. A lot of the wicked, Esau, Edom. It says, his, remem his remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew, because his whole sea line is going to be cut off in time among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, as they that were before, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not Yahweh Bashim Man. Joel 2. And one, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, the government of the Lord. We're, we're blowing the trumpet, we're warning our people of these days that are coming, the destruction of the wicked, the destruction of two-thirds of our people, and those dwelling in the land that know not Yahweh Shemel Shai. Okay. It says, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai cometh. For it is nigh at hand. The day of the Lord is, is going to be no joke. As in Daniel, it says, uh, the things that we're going to see has never happened before since there was a nation on the earth. But how much more the destruction that the Lord is going to bring. The Lord already brought the first death, a great cataclysm upon the world, the great flood, which people still talk about to this day. But the Lord is going to top himself with the destruction he's going to bring this time. It says, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds going into the chariots and of thick darkness are going to cover the skies. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people going into the missiles and a strong that had not been ever the like because they, be, they were created for this particular day, the day of the Lord. All right, as uh, the Lord stated, the wicked. The wicked was created for the day of evil. All things the Lord made for himself, including the wicked, for the day of evil. It says, there have not been ever the like, neither shall there, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A, a fire devoureth before them. Yep. Because when they shoot out of the silos, uh, it's like a, it's a blast, like poof. And then you see the missile whoosh, come out of the smoke. And then there's a fire behind and propul a propulsion system uh, 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 getting them to their destination. Okay? A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden. There's life, is lush, fertile, it's greenery. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them and behind them once they hit and behind them a desolate wilderness. That's all they leave once they hit is a desolate wilderness. Yeah. And nothing shall escape them. See that? It shall come down upon Idumia. Okay. I believe that was um, that was it. Let's go to uh, Second Ezra 16. Okay. And then we're going to go up top. No, this Second Ezra is 15. We're going to go to Second Ezra 16 up top. Okay. Second Ezra 16. Well, actually, 15 and uh, Second Ezra 15 and uh, 30, start 29 or 28. <whistles> Second Edges 15 to 27. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye, the people of the earth, shall remain in them. For Yahweh, by Shimei Shah, shall not deliver you, because you have sinned against him. Behold, an horrible vision, and the appearance thereof from the east, where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude 
of them shall be carried as the wind upon earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble, because World War has come to World War Three. That's the that's the uh, the sum of all fears, because in World War Three is going to be the weapons. All right, of the Lord's indignation is going to be released, used, uh, debuted. Okay, it says also the Carmanians, who is that? The Iranians, raging in wrath because they're going to be mad because in that region they've been done wrong, they've been surrounded, they feel threatened. Okay, they're going to come out against their enemies in the region and against the West. Also, the Carmanians, raging in wrath shall go forth as a wild boar, as the wild boars out of the wood. And it's funny because a boar, it only attacks you when it feels cornered or threatened, right? And that's exactly what Iran feels in that region. They feel cornered and threatened by those ugly-ass small hats and by the West. Okay, but now they have a, a weapon to combat the West now. Hey, well, we, we might, might just have one, two, maybe, you know. They just need one hypersonic, really. And just launch it to any American city or just launch it to um, Tel Aviv or wherever the hell, where them rats is. And it's over right there. That's going to take out a lot of people. And it's undetected. So, hey, that's why it says it's going to be a, a, a fear in the east. All right, horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. And also, also that vision is the coming of the Lord because he's going to appear in the east. All right, make his way west. It says... Also, the Carmanians raging in wrath shall go forth as the wild boars of the wood. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them, the other uh, nations that they're linked with and against the nations that they're fighting against in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Okay. And shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians, the Assyrians not being the ancient Assyrians, but the prophetic Assyrians, which are the Americans today. They're going to la waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. They're going to be uh, uh, one of the nations in part of destroying America. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. Because uh, Ishmael is crazy. So he's a wild man. Every man's hand is against him and his hand is against every man. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. And that they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power, to persecute them. And that's it. See? So, hey, the thing that connects uh, uh, the Carmanians with the, the dragons of Arabia is their religion, Islam. So they're going to all come together and shoot at this whore and destroy uh, the small hats and America, man. Because it tells you in another place, the smallest of the flock, them small hats is going to draw everybody out. And they're going to make their habitation desolate with them, the them being America. Okay? That's pretty much it. Second Edges 15 in the GNTA. My people are being led to the slaughter like a flock of sheep. They will no longer have to live in Egypt. Modern Egypt is America. I will use all my strength and power to bring them out, the elect, out of that land. I will bring disaster Disasters upon the Egyptians, the modern day Egyptians are the Americans, as I did earlier. And I will destroy their country. The Lord is destroying this country in every facet of the word. The whole land will be in mourning. It will be shaken to its foundations. When I, the Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, strike it and pound on it. The farmers, we already see that. This ugly ass dude killed Gates, bought off all the farmland, but farmers were calling suicide hotlines, giving up, bugging out, euthanizing their flocks, dumping out their milk and goods. The farmers will mourn because their seed will fail to sprout. Yep, you had uh, Monsanto. The land was hit with fires, a storm, frost, flooding, drought, hurricane, the ratios, which are land hurricanes, and their trees will be destroyed by blight, hail, and terrible storms. There's a storm hitting uh, right now in Florida, uh, Nicole, whatever. It says the world and the people in it are doomed. You go into that word doomed means judged. Verse 15, the war that will bring their destruction. World War Three is very near. Nations will arm themselves. We read that in the article. Iran is arming itself against its enemies in the region 
and against the West. See, preferably Israel, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is going to join with uh, with Russia and those other nations to come against uh, uh, the West. All right, even though they were with the West for, for a cool little minute, they're going to they gonna change sides. All right. Because the thing that connects Saudi Arabia to Iran is not race, but religion. See that? They're going to have common goals against the West. The West ain't got no common goals with, with Saudi Arabia. They allow goddamn sodomites and, and moles and shit and, and children getting sex changes and shit. Them Saudis ain't for that. Like, what the fuck are you? Nah, nah, we can't do business anymore. Nope. We going to go with, with this side over here. Okay. It says the world and the people in it are doomed. The war that will bring their destruction is very near. Nations will arm themselves and fight against other nations. Nations prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. All right. All right. Gentiles prepare war. That's what we read in Joel. This is the, uh, the war that will bring their destruction. World War Three is very near. Nations will arm themselves to and fight against other nations. World War Three. There will be great political turmoil going into the signs in the heavens. It's political turmoil. You had a blood moon on the eve of uh, the elections with one group trying to overpower another and gain control while ignoring the legitimate government. Governments are collapsing. Uproars of the people. People are disgruntled. They're fed up. They're through. OK, you have the signs in the heavens and then distress upon nations with perplexity. Lack of resources. There will no longer be free access to cities, martial law, because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live. Verse 19, going into uh, the perplexity, lack of resources, not knowing which way to turn. Driven by famine and terrible suffering, people will assault their neighbors and mercilessly plunder their possessions. Yahweh Bashimal Shai says, I am calling together all the kings of the earth to come from north, south, east, and west to turn back and restore what they have taken. World War III. That's how the Lord is going to uh, bring us out of slavery when you read Joel 1. So I will bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. When it says bring again the captivity, it means to take us out of slavery. So the Lord is preparing this war, World War III. To bring us out of slavery, to let the world know I'm bringing you nations down to war, to fight and plead, judge you for what you did to my people. Because we already been judged. We 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 tasted of the cup of the Lord's fury. All right. But now you nations have to taste the fury of Yahweh Shimon Shai. I will pay them back with the same harsh treatment they have always given to my chosen people. The Lord Yahweh Bashimashai says, I will use my power, and there will be no mercy for sinners. I will put to death all who have murdered innocent people by way of what? Different plagues, death, war, famine, pestilence, and ultimately nuclear fire. My anger has become so fierce that fire has blazed out to burn up the foundations of the earth and to burn up sinners like straw. The Lord's gonna send out those lasers. And also the missus. Hence, we, we went into the brimstone. Okay. Let's get that in. Uh, I know there's one in Jeremiah. Oh, man. Ooh. Ezekiel 38 and 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands. Those armies. And upon the, the many people that are with him in overflowing rain. A great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. That's how the Lord is going to destroy you nations, your people, and He's going to destroy your armies with that laser. Okay, overflowing, man. Okay, overflowing rain. But where is that at in um ah uh, Jeremiah? Oh, as the Lord overthrew Sodom, more overthrew. That's how the Lord is going to overthrow this place, overthrew. Okay, bear with me, brothers. Jeremiah 50 and 40. 
as Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell there, America. No one's gonna overthrow you. Okay. Dang. That's it. Yeah. Mm. It says, Behold, the people shall come from the north, the northeast, uh, uh, Russia, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses, military weaponry, and vehicles, every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee. O oh, daughter of Babylon, America, the kings of Babylon have heard the report of them and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish took hold of him and pangs as of a woman in travail. See that? So the different presidents previous to this dude Biden, which is closer to nuclear war uh, since uh, the 60s with Kennedy. And I forgot the other dude, the Russian guy, when they had the Bay of Pigs. Uh, uh, standoff, which they called it, uh, um, uh, uh, the nuclear, uh, damn, what they called it, um, was, I know it was the Bay of Pigs, uh, uh, with Kennedy and, uh, the other dude, uh, damn, what was it called, uh, let me, let me look it up real quick. I'm back, Akim. Yeah, it was the Bay of Pigs, which was a failed, uh, military operation, but it brought the world the closest it's ever been to nuclear war. All right, but that that wasn't the time because the technology wasn't as uh, advanced as it is now. The RFID uh, was not pushed. The men of the Lord was not preaching as yet. The, the elect was not yet sealed. Israel was not yet awakened. So it couldn't have happened then. But now with this dude Biden, they're closer to nuclear war than they ever been since with the 1960s with that Bay of Pigs incident. That brought the world uh, uh, the closest it's ever been to nuclear war. Okay. So, uh, what else do I want to get? Uh, see here. Bear with me, brothers. Okay. So, like you. Desolation, desolate. Okay, bear with me, brothers. Okay, yeah. Jeremiah forty nine and twenty. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, that he he have taken against Edom, and his purposes that he have purposed against the inhabitants of Teman, which are the Germans. Which is because of the Germans, they they uh, constructed these weapons. Okay, you had a, a group of, of 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 these German scientists uh, from the tribe of Teman of the nation of Edom. Some went to Russia, others went to the U.S. Operation Paperclip. Okay, and they, that's when they began to build these weapons for the next world conflict, World War Three. Okay, and they built these weapons. First ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, to, able to get the missile from one land to the next in a matter of minutes. But now they have hypersonic missiles that can get to these uh, places at a speed uh, 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 beyond the sound, uh, uh, beyond uh, uh, the speed of sound, and they're also undetected, and they can maneuver in a uh, flight. Barakatayahabashimashayma. <laughs> So surely the least of the flock, the small hats, shall draw them out, all these nations for war. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate, destroyed by those missiles with them. Who's the them? America. Because America is connected uh, to uh, those rats. All right, that state of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the state of the Israeli state or whatever the hell. Just say it like that. Okay. Jeremiah 50 and 3, for out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, which shall make her land desolate. None shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. You see that? 
Nothing's going to be left. You see? Barakatha Yahal Bashim Shai. All right. Jeremiah 51 and 26, and they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. That's it. Barakatha Yahweh Bashim Shai. Come for one another with these words the destruction of our enemies. All right, the downfall of the wicked. This is what the Lord wants. This is what the Lord uh, has pronounced against his enemies. All right, one last uh, scripture. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, we're going to get a psalm. We're going to get psalm and we're going to get uh, psalm 46. <clears throat> Psalm 46. Okay. All right. Oh man, the whole the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. Psalm 46 and 1. To the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. Yahweh is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Because it's gonna be a great trouble that's gonna hit the earth. Therefore will not we fear that the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the mountains representing the governments fall to nothing in the midst of the people by way of war. Okay? Crumble to nothing. It says, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled going into the people, as well as the waters, because the earth is going to rock to and fro, tsunamis, earthquakes, Okay, volcanic eruptions, but the, the waters representing the people's nation's tongues, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains, the government shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, you know, a central root, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of Yahweh, the truth. Okay, a flowing river. All right, the, uh, the influence flowing from the Almighty, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. We're going to hide under the shadow of the Almighty. We're not going to fear the arrow that flieth by day. It says, Yahweh is in the midst of her, Israel, Jerusalem, Zion. She shall not be moved. Yahweh shall help her. And that right early, at the very same time the missiles fly, World War III is uh, ended by way of Yahweh Shai destroying the armies of the world, turning them to dust and smoke. That's when the Lord is going to help her, which is Israel, early, the elect. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Because the Lord is going to leave some of our people, two thirds here, and melt them. One third he's going to take through the fire. Okay? Now, uh, oh, we'll arrive to and to and fro. To and fro. Okay. Isaiah, yeah. There's Isaiah 24 and 20. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall, this age, and not rise again. Esau Edom is going to fall and not rise again. Okay? And it shall come to pass that in that day, that the Lord Yahweh Bashimashai shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. <laughs> Excuse me. That's what the Lord's going to do. Okay. That's what the Lord's going to do. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in a pit. Yeah, we're going to take them out of those deep underground military bases. They shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited to be destroyed. After that thousand years, after they uh, uh, serve their time, their slavery, they're going to be visited, which is when a God meets a mortal. And we're going to be a nation of gods, kings and priests. And we're going to destroy Esau, Edom. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people. He shall be chased out of the earth. It says, then the moon shall be confounded, which is going into the understanding. And the son of shame, wisdom, ashamed of these damn devils to think that they were anything against our power. Ye are but men. 
when the Lord Yahweh Bashim Hashav host shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. <laughs> you see, it says, the heathen raged, Psalm 46 and uh, 6. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Hashav hosts is with us, the Israelites. <laughs> so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, beginning with the hopeful elect, that house of David. The power of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Come, verse 8, behold the works, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai. Come, behold the works of, Yah of Yahweh Bashim Shai. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still. <whistles> and no. That I am power. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord is going to be exalted when he does all this. To make his name glorious. And to be feared. And reverenced. And praised. And honored. And also the name of his son. Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai is going to come do a great work. All judgment has been given into the hands of the son. The son will be reverenced as the Father is to be reverenced in that day. This is Psalm 46 and 11. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim of hosts, is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So with that, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim al Shai, Bashim, Rakah Kodash, for whom we do function, double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers. At Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hopeful elect that house of David. To your brothers out there fighting this good fight of faith, Shalom, keep it up. To your sisters doing that which is becoming a woman, Shalom, and to those that are addicted unto this ministry, I say, Shalom. Lord's willing you have been edified with this lesson. Until the next time I say Shalom, on to the next one. Shalom.